Howdy folks. Uh, sorry I'm not there to join you, but something came up and Terry and I had to go to Alaska. So I know you're having fun and today's going to be a great day, but uh, I'm there in spirit, although I'm not there in, pre in the person. Uh, I'm thankful for Liz Moyer and Steve Simpson for allowing me to make this, pre this presentation by video. Um, some of you might, were at the Bela Selby house. I don't know if you can tell that. Maybe we can get some shots in this house. But um, some of y'all may not know that this house had uh, both owners, Bayless, Mr. Bayless and Mr. Selby, were in the horticulture business and in actually produce. Uh, they had This house was located about uh, half a mile south of the square from the present location, really. Uh, where they had a hundred acres of, of produce and they'd bring it up to the square and sell it. But uh, also they got into the floral business. Mr. Uh, R.L. Jr. who grew up here as a child, the R.L. Sr. owned the property and was in the produce business. But R.L. Jr. Uh, was in a member of the garden club when I got here and we put on a vegetable show, the Men's Garden Club. We had 300 entries, and as you may remember or know that we produced this, the Master Gardeners produced the vegetable show here uh, in the spring and summer each year. So uh, there's kind of a tie-in, and that was 11 years after, I came here in, in 85, and that was 11 years after R.L. Selby Jr. and his wife, Marie, Marie uh, made the arranged the flowers for Terry and I's wedding. So we got married down the street at the First Methodist Church, Cole Chapel, and the owners previously of this home arranged the flowers for our wedding, which will now be, we just celebrated our 45th uh, this past May. So we're, uh, we're alive and, and well. Um, also, George Selby, his brother, was uh, in the wholesale floor, floral business, and he uh, provided the flowers to the to the retail nursery there. I mean, the retail florist uh, that R.L. Jr. Uh, owned. Um, well, um, incidentally, I did see uh, the, the handbell. George Selby kept the handbell for the. The, uh, the horse-drawn wagon that um, his father, R.L. Sr., rode around the streets of Denton announcing his arrival, and uh, kind of like the ice cream man. So there's a strong history. And, of course, the master gardeners have come in, and as the house was moved to this location, of course, it needed a landscape, and the master gardeners provided all the beautiful plants. They did a lot of research, probably a year of research, had to be approved by the Historical Commission and all that. But um, the, all the plants you see around here are historic from the time, turn of the century, basically. So this is one of the projects at the Bell Selby House they were very proud of. Um, and Carolyn Gold, um, Mary Ellen Richards, and Ruth Bain provided much of the leadership along with so many others I know uh, through the years, especially providing the, the maintenance. And of course, it's won many awards, state, state awards. Um, well, the, uh, uh, the whole idea of the Denton Master Gardener Association is sharing a common mission doing more together, making the world a more beautiful place in which to live and grow and experience life. And uh, that's, that's who the DCMJ is. The life of DCMJ is definitely worth celebrating and we're glad that we all made it to the 30th anniversary today. Um, when I left you a de decade ago, I didn't know who was gonna replace me and uh, when I met Janet Lamanac, it wasn't too long before, after she arrived, I was very happy. 
uh, lated, you could say. Uh, she uh, knew her stuff, very technically sound, and uh, personable, and quick, and ready uh, to serve in any way. I mean, she was there to, to uh, support y'all. So I was very happy, and y'all uh, are very lucky to have her come follow me. Uh, made it much better. Well, the, my topic is remembering the roots, uh, remembering our roots. Well, I'm going to start with the seeds. Um, the first Master Gardener program started in Washington State in Seattle with uh, David Gilby, uh, Gibby. And in fact, I had the pleasure of meeting him in the, in the uh, late 80s when he came to a retreat for all the horticulturists. Very nice man and uh, very helpful as we got our start in Texas. The first Master uh, Gardener program was, in, uh, not, was established in 1979 with Le Tom Leroy in Montgomery County, north of Houston in, in uh, Conroe. And uh, he had to be the happiest uh, horticulturist in Texas. We all met uh, at least once a year as horticulturists and uh, reviewed our, all of our recommendations and so forth. And, uh, of course, when we saw uh, Tom Leroy, he was, uh, we all wanted to be like him because he had a master gardener program and uh, was doing very well with it. Soon after, uh, in 81, Galveston, El Paso started, then Tarrant County in 86, uh, followed by uh, Denton and Bear County, San Antonio in uh, 89. So Denton was the seventh or eighth program, depending on whether you count Bear first or us first. So. Today there's 88 counties and uh, 89 program. Harris County has two programs that are so big they can't get across town. So they have, I think at one time they had like six, but apparently they've gone uh, just to two. Before the program in 85 to 89, when I got here, uh, I was the master gardener. I was the go-to person, the garden guy. And so I did all the presentations, answered all the questions and uh, solved all the problems. But uh, when I came to, to Denton uh, in 85 and then uh, until 89, I was the go-to guy. I didn't have a master gardener program. And uh, although I knew I wanted one as soon as I got here, because when I was uh, in College Station before here, from 79 to 85, I was uh, uh, associated with the horticulture program on campus. And uh, I was running a statewide pecan pest management program, but uh, I operated uh, entomology, pathology, horticulture. But as a trained horticulturist, two degrees in that, I needed to, to associate. And I knew I was coming to a county when I uh, uh, got my master's. So I was in graduate school with Doug Welsh, and, um, who eventually became the statewide coordinator. And uh, like I say, I, was, I met with the master uh, met with the horticulturists from all of the states. So I knew it was coming. I knew the, the Master Gardener program was the wave of the future. So our first class had uh, uh, 12 people in the Dirty Dozen, and we didn't have a, a um, handbook for probably three years or so. Uh, Doug Welsh had to get all the specialists involved and get their approval, and some of them weren't as... Uh, forthcoming as others, but we what we did was we put all our publications in a three-ring binder, and so anything that we do did, we could provide or covered, we could also present to our public, our audience. So it worked pretty well, kind of the same way it does now with the website where we download, but these are all printed. In fact, that time we had, we were part of USDA, and USDA had a whole slew of publications that even Texas didn't have. Um, but at first, we didn't have any projects, you know, kind of like skipping rope. We kind of had to ramp up to this, kind of like get a train rolling where uh, we had to start slow. There wasn't synergy. There wasn't things going on. So the first few years uh, were kind of a struggle. But 
gradually we got enough involvement and we got enough going. We trusted each other and it happened. Now about 1996, Tom, Hart, uh, Tom uh, Edmondson, my Sunday school teacher and guardian angel who was there for me every step of the way, uh, came in my office and said, um, Cooper, we need to step this thing up a little bit. It's uh, tighten our, we need to tighten the ship because uh, a lot of these people we hadn't seen in years, so we did and it took a while to train everybody up to where they reported accurately and on time and uh, pretty much everybody what got cer certified as scheduled uh, we lost about half of our 200 on the roll but uh, we were tight and ready to go uh, soon after that um, I made the, the best move in my career in 97 when I uh, hired Donna Wolf uh, from the class of 96 uh, she came out of corporate management with Lomas, uh, Lomas Sales in the mortgage department. She knew how organizations work, and she was ready to go. So I'm uh, very happy to, to see her come along and very even more happy when I saw what she could do. Um, but at this point, I want to stop and have everybody stand up, and uh, I'll give you a minute to stand up. And after everybody stu has stood up, um, we're going to give three cheers for Donna Wolf. And so I say hip hip, and you say hooray. So here we go three cheers hip hip, hip hip, hip hip. All right, very good. Everybody can sit down now. Well, I always cringed a little when Donna came into my office and said, Mr. Cooper, we need to step, step it up a little. But uh, she, we made it through, and my second best move was I didn't run her off. So we're, we're very happy and, and salute Donna today. Donna's first lieutenant, uh, Selena Schindler, was always front and center. Wherever, whenever there was an event, she was there and with bells on, as Donna would say, and uh, with a smile and uh, very much the model for all of our master gardeners to follow. I see that we have the, some honorees today, some veterans, uh, Selena Schindler, Myrna Ingalls, Joan Stanley, Carolyn Gold, um, Ruth Orpin, Gresha Lehman, and Linda Williams, Donna Wolf, of course, and uh, I know these people will be recognized in the program, so I won't, I won't embarrass you now, but uh, I would like to thank you out to, quite out to computers and printers. I think I wore out about three secretaries before I got my own word processor, uh, before Donna, that was before Donna. Uh, letters to email, uh, printed pubs, to publications to uh, web page downloads, Basically, no computers <clears throat> to dcmj.com and horticulture, aggiehorticulture.com. And now we, we see, I saw we had Twitter. And uh, the first time I saw it, I saw a link to the entomology page at Texas A&M for more information. I was elated. It was wonderful. My heart went to Twitter. Any organization will die if it's not growing. And we hit, a, we hit a wall in the late 90s. Uh, we had grown, we were active, but we were not getting bigger. In fact, I decided and we, we mulled over many things, but eventually it came to that we needed to expand our leadership. And through a process of, of uh, uh, you know, uh, where there's a will, there's a way. It, it just came to be that we had, uh, we adopted a servant model of uh, where the, the project managers and the, the committee chairs were autonomous and selected from the entire membership for their team members. We didn't write anybody down, it, uh, no committee members down except the chair and the project 
team leaders. And they had full association and they could capitalize on all their friendships and ties. And it made a, it knit us across all the disciplines, all the projects, and it really energized our, our uh, or association. So I would say that I see that today uh, and, and I think that's the core of DCMJ, the, the servant leader model with self-organizing teams. I'm real, real proud that we got to that stage before I left. Over the years, we've evolved from two, into two parts, uh, external and internal organizational development and community or public service or customer service. And on the organizational side, uh, we developed a directory with photos, established bylaws on standing rules, a newsletter, which is fabulous uh, now, by the way, and a website, also fabulous, a DCMJ board and monthly meetings, an annual planning retreat, a big one, a projects development and reporting process that worked, and I think it's better now that it's so electronic, and an annual DCMJ Awards and Recognition, meaning which I was privileged to, enter, uh, to participate in this past January. On the external or customer service side, Master Gardeners have served many thousands of people of all ages from school and preschool gardeners to retiree gardeners in retirement homes. Major projects over the years have included the annual spring garden tour and plant sale, the annual fall info fair. One of the most fun was the little hands on the farm at the State Fair of Texas. The Denton Nature Center at South Lakes Park with Kathy Scott, I saw a reference to that recently in the newsletter. Bird list for Ray Roberts in North Texas by Myrna Engel and I've become a backyard uh, birder and uh, filling my bird feeders and clean, keeping the bird bath clean is one of the <laughs> and, and pleasures of my life in retirement. Ret uh, the uh, Habitat for Humanity with over 30 home landscapes installed and homeowners educated. Denton Redbud Days Festival celebrating the Redbud capital of Texas. Keep Denton Beautiful certification and Denton Tree Inventory to become Tree City USA. The Conservation of Tree Seedlings Distribution Program where we've distributed over 70,000 tree seedlings to hundreds of landowners in Denton County. Cool Shade for third grade with Carolyn Gold. Multiple school gardens throughout the county by many master gardeners. Liz Dola with Rica Patents was a massive education effort to educate kids in Louisville ISD, which is ongoing. It was a big push for uh, xeriscaping and, and butterfly gardening, and it's mostly been turned over to the uh, master naturalist at this, at this point. H. A. Turnia and Gene Gumphrey managing the Bowling Green Community Garden year after year. Of course, the vegetable show here out in front of the Bayless Selby House. And I will always remember Tom Harpool bringing the right produce from his several gardens around town and country. The antique rose trials and hay bale gardening at the Cumberland Presbyterian Children's Home, conducted by the late Jane Powell. The Bayless Selby House antique landscape under the leadership, as I said, Carolyn Gold, Ruth Bain, and Mary Ellen Richards, among others. Incidentally, the, the Selbys were known for their roses in their nursery. And perhaps the biggest single project in which the whole DCMJ membership was engaged was the annual meeting of the Texas Master Gardener Association, uh, led by Peggy Durrett. Many projects started in the early years continue even up to the present day, albeit in updated and improved versions. Gradually over the years, my primary audience became my Master Guard volunteers. I found while I could accomplish much on my own, I could accomplish so much more by training more of you. You were there 
where I could not go and do what I could not do. And you did it with passion. Gardening to me in extension was a medium through which to engage people in the beautiful things of life. How fortunate I was to have joined with you in the service of others. More than anything, I wanted you to all love Texas A&M and the impulse of service it instills. And even though you may not have gone there, maybe you felt like you were an Aggie too. There were a lot of ways uh, the Master Gardener program could be done. There were a lot of people who could have done it, but it was us who did, and we did the best way we knew how. Thank you for the memories and the friendships. It was all good, and most of all, it was fun. And Janet, thank you for taking DCMJ over and making it better than ever before. Now I will leave you with a wish for all the very best and great success and continued service to the people of Denton County for many decades to come.